Good morning, YouTube. Happy Friday. It is a jam-packed day for my AP Chemistry students. Surprise, surprise, I'm quizzing today. I always tend to quiz every class period. Um, the students actually had two quizzes this week, and they're always very short, so they're just a one-question quiz usually. Um, I do uh, use OWL to assess, and then what I have the students do is upload their work into Google Classroom so that I can give partial credit. So today, for example, they're taking a quiz on solutions to achaeometry, so they're going to be giving given the question an OWL and it is an algorithm so it allows the students to have all different questions when they log in and then they'll be uploading their work to Google Classroom just by taking a picture. Um, it's important for me to actually see their work because that way when they're being graded by the AP reader I want to make sure that their work is very clear and they include units so I wanted to make sure that even though the answer for example is just you know supposed to be typed in an OWL they also can show their work and I can give partial credit where appropriate. After that, then my students are going to be working on our very first virtual lab. So we're doing a redox titration today. It's investigation number eight in the guided inquiry manual. I'm really excited to show you what I did to it to make it a little bit more engaging, even though it is virtual. So I'm gonna post that up to Google Classroom and then I'll check back in with you guys a little bit later on today. It's the end of the day on Friday. I had a great day with my students, a very busy day with the virtual lab. My students were taking their quiz and then we rolled into the virtual lab. I made breakout rooms for the students to work in. Basically, the lab asked the students to determine the percent hydrogen peroxide in a bottle of peroxide from the drugstore. And they do this by standardizing a solution of potassium permanganate. And then they need to um, take that solution and analyze how much hydrogen peroxide is in the um, bottle of hydrogen peroxide. Obviously they should come close to a 3% solution and when I did the lab I came out to that so the results were pretty good. But my students really had to do it kind of more guided inquiry style so as written in the College Board Manual the students have to determine what pieces of data they need. But they make it a little bit easier for them because it shows them an example of a calculation using oxalic acid and so ultimately they'll see that it, the same type of calculations that they do for the oxalic acid, that's what they're going to have to do for for the hydrogen peroxide titration. So it wasn't too, too bad. The only thing that's weird is when we're doing it virtually, there's obviously not a whole lot of room for discussion. Um, so what I had the students do instead was discuss in their breakout rooms. So the students completed their pre-lab questions in their breakout rooms, and then they moved on to actually looking at my lab video. So in my lab video, I show the students the technique for rinsing the burettes, and filling the jet tip, and all that good stuff. I show them how they're supposed to read the burette. Um, and so it's really an instructional video because last year when we left because of COVID, we really didn't have the ability for the students to do any kind of titrations or solutions to a geometry. So I needed to really make sure that the students know how to read the burette because I know in years prior, students were asked to read a burette on the exam. So I want to make sure that they have that experience and of course that they're reading with the proper sig figs and including units and all that. So my video was done such that I am kind of zooming in on parts of the meniscus with the different burettes. I have the students read the burettes. Um, I think it's, I think I put it in four different times. And so um, overall, I think it was good. The students said that um, they thought it was fine in terms of, you know, even though they weren't able to necessarily do the lab and complete it like hands on, they still were able to get some of the experience and understand the technique because like, they had the lab video. Um, so to allow the students to make the observations in the lab video, really helped, I think, with a level of engagement because they were recording that information in their data table and then they had to take the data and manipulate the data to figure out how much hydrogen peroxide was in the sample. I also did something similar this week with my college prep chemistry students. So we were focusing on the flame test lab. So we're in our unit on light. And with the flame test lab, um, what I did is I made another uh, video for it. However, that one didn't come out so well just because it was very hard to see the different colors. So that was unfortunate. So I still made the video, I still showed them the video, but instead I actually ended up giving them the data and I made it more about having the students write a claim evidence reasoning statement. Claim evidence reasoning is something that we're gonna be using throughout the year, especially in our units on periodic trends and intermolecular forces. So I wanted to make sure that we could use this as an opportunity to show the flame test lab but also introduce CERs and what's expected of them when they're responding to certain questions. So the CER that I was having the students write 
was which part of the compound formula is responsible for the flame. So they have the data, so that's their evidence, they can use that. And then their reasoning, they obviously have to talk a little bit about what they see in the data. And you know, if they wanted to talk a little bit about how light is produced in an atom, that's cool too, but it was just important for them that they had all three parts. And then I'm gonna go through this weekend and grade it and make sure that they're okay with that. And then hopefully that'll make things a little bit easier and kind of set the stage as we go through the rest of the school year using claim evidence reasoning. So overall, it was a great week. It was an exhausting week. Um, I have to admit, it took a lot of work to prepare all the lab videos. In fact, I think it was Wednesday night. Yeah, Wednesday night, I was up till about two o'clock in the morning um, to like edit the videos because I was doing it for both college prep and, and AP Chem. So it was a lot of work. Um, I don't think I'm gonna do that again because I mean, I'll do videos, but I'm probably not gonna do lab videos for both classes in the same week because it was just a lot to manage. Um, but I'm really happy with the way things turned out. Of course, I wish my students were in the classroom with me and I was actually able to do the lab with them um, because it's so exciting to see kids in lab, but doing the best I can, trying to give them some sort of meaningful experience. And I think the kids know that. I think they appreciate that, you know, I'm trying to um, help them and expose them to all the different things that we would have done in chemistry if they were in the classroom with me. With that said, I am gonna get out of here. We have a long weekend this weekend, thank goodness. So there may actually be a day this weekend that I'm not doing any work. Um, I hope you are having a wonderful week with your students, a wonderful school year so far with your kids. I know it is definitely not easy the way things have been going. I'm hopeful that things are slowly returning back to normal. I am so excited for next week because I'm actually going to have students in my room. So I'm really pumped for that. It's the end of September. The kids are supposed to come back hybrid next week. So I am super pumped to actually have students in the classroom with me. Um, and so I'm excited for that interaction because it's been just too, too long. But I hope you have a wonderful weekend and I'll definitely talk to you guys next week.